Hi everyone, welcome to another of Expert Web's podcast series. Today we'll be discussing the new remote work visa that's in, introdu- been introduced to South Africa. I'm joined today by my esteemed colleague Manfred Barnard. I'm Adil Wadi. We're both senior immigration consultants here at Expert Web. I think the first thing which is on everyone's mind is what exactly is a remote work visa? Yes, absolutely. Thank you for the kind introduction. Um, So a remote work visa really is for your digital nomads, your freelance workers, really wanting to make the world their office or already have made their office. Mm -hmm. Now, for a very long time, South Africa was kind of cordon off. You couldn't really work remotely as you needed a South African employer for all work visas, short term or long term. And this remote work visa really opens the door for people interested in working in South Africa albeit not for a South African company. And I think one of the big things that you need to work on or know before you pursue this application is that there are three main criteria. Namely, you need to earn a minimum income of 1 million ZAR per annum. You need to register with the South African Revenue Service or SARS um, if the visa is issued for more than six months and that the work you conduct must solely be for a foreign based employer. Yeah, no, that's absolutely correct. I mean, I think since COVID hit way back when in 2019, the world has been ever changing. Mm -hmm. Work, work from home, work remotely has been something that's not not South Africa specific, but worldwide. Mm -hmm. Most companies are adopting uh, approaches like that and allow for their employees to work from home, work remotely because productivity has been a lot better that way. So. The fact that South Africa has considered introducing something like this, I think, is a is a fantastic uh, initiative by them. It will not only boost South Africa's economy, but it helps experts around the world. So it's it's something that we do look forward to. I know you touched on the the key requirements. One of them, which I think we do need to address, though, is that of registering with SARS. Mm-hmm. We've we've found out recently from the minister himself that that requirement is still being worked on by the Department of Home Affairs. They are currently engaging with SARS just to see exactly how an assignee would be required to register with SARS if they are planning to stay in South Africa for longer than six months. We haven't received any feedback with regards to that as yet, but he has assured us that they are actively working on it. And as soon as that comes through, then obviously we'll have a little bit more clarity with regards to how that requirement specifically works. Yes, absolutely. And I think just to touch on your point of the minister actively consulting with SARS and Home Affairs consulting with SARS-1, that shows the minister's um, vision of a unified South Africa, Yes, which is obviously something he made very clear in our event recently to us. Yes, But also the fact that the requirements for the remote work visa is kind of a grey zone at this point in time. Mm-hmm. Um, and with all grey zones, there are teething issues and Based on recent experiences with like embassies abroad, we've noticed that they do not accept applications for remote work visas at this point in time due to them being unsure. Yeah, them being unsure. And that is something we definitely need to look at for expatriates wishing to apply for this visa and also the opportunities for them. I mean, how do you address this now in the interim? You want to make South Africa your office and I think you should definitely possibly look at an 11-2 visa application, although the big problem there is the South African employer. It's a big point of contention. The applicant who applies for an 11-2 visa must always have a South African employer, even though he's sent from a foreign company. And also, it's only a visa for 180 days, and that's if you renew it in South Africa, as to as opposed to the remote work visa, which can be issued for up to 36 months, as it's issued in line with Section 11-1 before of the Immigration Act, and really allows foreign nationals to make South Africa basically the starting point of their new business. Mm. I, I think I think those are some great points. Just to touch on them as well with regards to Section 11 of the Immigration Act where the remote work visa falls in, that is, is like you said, it's a bit of a grey area because a lot of people look at that section and there is requirements for those type of visas which are set out in black and white for, in order for you to apply for this type of visa, this is what you need. So. With the requirements still being a bit grey, it is something that a lot of people are struggling with at the moment. They don't have any clarity. And we are hopeful that the minister obviously brings out clarity with regards to those those specific requirements which are now in contention. 
But other than that, I mean, I think it's a very exciting opportunity for a lot of people. Mm. A lot of digital nomads out there find South Africa is one of the best places to come to. I mean, Cape Town is now one of the hubs for tourism within the world. So it is something which I think a lot of people are excited for. And hopefully it will, that, that changes which need to happen will be done soon. And people can start applying for this visa. Yeah, within the coming months. I yeah, think, definitely. I think absolutely. And should you be one of these lucky individuals who... Yeah wish to pursue this visa, I definitely think that you should keep a co- close eye on all our newsletters, um, mailers, social media, as we have proven ourselves to be immigration, the forefront of South African immigration companies, and we normally get the first inside scoop, as I could say, yeah. uh, on these type of things, and we'll ensure to make you informed of these changes as of recent. And I think also one thing that we really need to touch on with the remote work visa, the biggest point or where the biggest gray area is, not only from a personal po- perspective, but in uh, the embassy's view, is registration with SARS. You really need to make sure that you have a trusted tracks practitioner who can look into yes. the requirements and yes. make sure that you make an informed decision and you don't put yourself in a very precarious position yeah. with regards to... Your tax compliance. I, I fully agree with that. that. And the other gray area which we may touch on since we are dealing with the grey areas is that of the renewals. Mm -hmm. I mean, aside from getting into South Africa the first time, getting your remote work visa issued abroad and then entering South Africa, should you want to renew because it was only issued for a shorter period, for example, six months or a year, it's something which clarity still has to be provided for with regards to that. We assume that it may be that you apply for the renewal within South Africa, like many of our other visas. However, that's something which is still waiting for confirmation from the Department of Home Affairs. But like you said, we always try to keep everyone who, not only our clients, but those who tend to visit our pages updated with regards to the latest news with immigration. So please stay tuned. We will definitely have another one of these things, I think, once all the clarity has been put out there, and then we'll address it all over again. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, and I think in closing, we, I think we as an immigration firm and all should really commend the Department of Home Affairs for their continued, how can I say, improvement. I mean, they've had a very rough few years, mm-hmm. I think we could say, but the remote work visa really shows that they are interested in promoting the economy in South Africa and really attracting foreign investment because yeah. The requirements do make themselves susceptible to individuals who are discerning and yeah, I think definitely you should keep a close tab on our pages and yeah, as myself and Otto will probably be in the next podcast and yeah, we'll discuss everything there. Thank you. Thank you for joining us.